As I've already mentioned, uh, saturated fats are not a good thing. Saturated fats are the things that clog up your arteries that may have heart attacks and also increase your risk of cancer. So there's been a couple of studies looking at saturated fat or dietary fat intake in, in, in patients and, and, and working out whether that has an impact on sperm parameters, particularly morphology and motility and so on, and indeed it does. So I guess the end of the day is that you are what you eat and that probably still holds true, but how do you package that into a, a healthcare message to give to our pe people of today, to give to our patients of today, I think remains to be seen. The last thing that I wanted to touch on is smoking. Because we know, and we've known for a long time, that smoking both reduces your natural conception rate, increases your risk of miscarriage, and we know that it reduces your ovarian reserve if you're a female. And there's probably something to the order of about 10 to 20% lower fertility in females as a dose-effect relationship in, in those that smoke to compare to those that don't. One of the quotes that I'd quite like to read out to you, if you will bear with me for a moment, is a study from a relatively long time ago in the research world, from 1996. Cigarette smoking is associated with a prolonged and dose-dependent, dose sorry, adverse effect on ovarian function. Smoking appears to have a more transient toxic effect on fertility because current smokers, but not past smokers, have a markedly reduced pregnancy rate after treatment cycles compared with non-smokers. Women should quit smoking before assisted reproduction cycles. It's pretty adamant there, isn't it, in a, in a scientific journal from 1996. And I'm just delighted that the Scottish Government has maybe just caught up with that one a little bit. In terms of um, meta-analysis, so big, big studies co combining various different studies to, to en enhance the evidence and so on, uh, there was a meta-analysis looking at patients undergoing IVF and ICSI um, who were smokers compared to non-smokers. And again, this is from 2009. They didn't see any difference in the, in the rate of fertilisation in these couples, but the couples had, that were smokers had almost half the rate of pregnancies compared to the non-smokers, and again, a significantly lower birth rate, a significantly higher rate of miscarriage and of ectopic pregnancy. The last thing to say to you is that I thought some of these new guidelines would be quite difficult to introduce to my patient population. Asking them to stop smoking when it's a lifetime habit, asking them to lose yet more weight when it's a difficult struggle is never easy to tackle as a doctor but I've been really quite delighted at the positive response that I've had from a lot of patients, particularly in response to ask to stop smoking. And obviously we have quite a good support network there in terms of smoking cessation that you can access and nicotine replacement therapy to help them get off cigarettes. My last plea, I guess, to the Scottish Government is we don't have a great deal of support for our overweight women who try and try and perhaps fail to lose the weight that's required and that denies them treatment. So I guess what I would ask if I had a big wish list of things to ask for is that we could perhaps have some more dietitians and perhaps have some more help and support for the patients out there that need to lose weight. And I guess education is where you start. Thank you very much.